ado, I'd like to welcome the man, the computer, the machine, Victor Ricozzo. Uh, evening, everyone. Uh, I have to thank Marie for saying that I'm in love with sleep. <laughs> and technically, and that explains the reason why I spend most of my time in my room. So, yes, so today I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> Is it working? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, tonight I'm going to be talking to you about artificial intelligence. We're going to try to figure out where computers are in recognizing emotions in speech. Okay. So many of you may be wondering why I chose this specific topic. So, you know how as humans, how we communicate with each other? There are many channels which we use. For example, we use facial expressions, we use speech, and we also use body language to communicate with each other. But what has happened recently these days is that everything that, every medium that we use to communicate has become digital or it has become part of the computer age. Because right now, you communicate most of your, like most of everything through iPhones, through Facebook, through I know, iPads, every, you use the technological channel to sort of like communicate with people. So that's why I chose that because everything is existing within the computer age. Then secondly, as humans communicate with each other, emotions form an integral part of that. But within the technological medium through which we communicate, we cannot really sort of relate emotions in that. So we're trying, um, the whole idea is trying to find out how can we put emotions into that technological channel of communication. Okay, so right now, what currently exists in the realm of human-computer interaction? Sort of like, what, is the, what currently exists in communication between computers and humans? So the first thing, as you may, many of you might have seen, facial recognition systems in airports and in high security areas, you know, when they try to figure out whether you have a bomb or something with you, something like that. And sociable robots, which are able to, to, detect, to detect how you feel or what emotion you're feeling based on like recording and analyzing different tone variations in the speaker. Then thirdly, there's a skin conductance sensor, which you can wear on the palm of your hand. I'll show you a picture right now, which measures the skin, um, basically the, the skin conductance and how high your skin has actually rise to see whether you're excited or bored. And that can be used in a way to sort of like, you know, it can be used in a way to sort of like get what are the things that really excite you and what are the things that really bore you. So examples, there's a social robot which is Kismet. It was developed by MIT. And here, to your what, right? Yes, to your right. <laughs> you're right, you have the skin conductance sensor. So right now, if, we were, if you, all of you guys were wearing this uh, skin conductance sensor, it would sort of like glow every time you got excited, or every time, and it would not glow if maybe a speaker was boring or started talking about things you didn't understand. So we would have seen, we'd seen, we'd have seen a lot of it glowing when Marie was talking, for instance. <laughs> so, as we are trying to, since my whole uh, project or my whole research project has been trying to figure out how can we integrate emotions in the whole technological channel. Let's look at what other human aspects convey, convey like emotions. As you've seen these facial expressions, you can see it. Here, there's my grandfather. I'm quite sure you can pretty tell what emotion or what emotional state is in, right? Yeah. Then there's body language. Body language also plays an important role in telling everybody how the person is actually feeling. Then there is speech, which is a very difficult one to analyze. That's why I actually chose it as well. Okay, so that brings me to the body of my research, speech emotion analysis. So just as, as a human, you can tell how somebody else is feeling or how somebody else is not feeling by listening to their speech, Instead of humans doing it, now we have computers or programs actually analyzing people's speech in order to detect how they're feeling. 
Sounds a little bit crazy, but you'll see what I mean by probably the end of this presentation. Yes. Yes. So, sorry. <laughs> My presentation is a little bit messed up. So, um, how? How do you think computers can be able to recognize emotions in speech? Does anybody have an idea of how they can actually make computers recognize emotions in speech? Anybody? Ah, come on guys, what's wrong with you? <laughs> TK? Okay, he said something very complicated, it just basically means you listen, you record and analyze the different changes in your tone or voice. That's one of the things, right? What else? What else can you think as humans? What do you actually pay attention to in, in recognizing motion speech? Yes, Hassan? Volume. Volume, for instance. What else, guys? What else? What else? Stanley? Choice of words. Choice of words, yes. So, we've gone through that. So, choice of words and things like volume and things like that. So, choice of words can also be analyzed as content, right? What is it that is being spoken? What is being said, right? So that's one of the elements which we analyze in speech. And the second part is vocal cues or acoustic, or acoustic elements. In this case, it can, be vo it can be voice, it can be tone, it can be speech rate and things like that, right? So now moving on. So now bringing everything together, this is where everything boils down and becomes sort of like a main thing. We are trying to understand how computers can recognize emotions in in speech by learning how humans do it. You've, you've, you've shown, you've, you've listed a few examples like voice, tone, and the choice of words, right? So we're going to see what experiments have been done in terms of trying to figure out how humans recognize emotions in speech and how, that met how those methods can be applied in computers. So somewhere in the States, I can't remember properly where it was, but uh, there was a study which was conducted on a range of on a range of people from four year olds to twenty year olds, and they were trying to figure out what do they actually listen to or what do they actually analyze as humans to sort of like uh, determine what how the speaker is actually feeling. So what they discovered was that when you're young or when you're like at least four years old, when you listen to somebody speak, the only way you can actually tell how they're feeling is based on what they say. But when you get older, between like the ages of 10, 12, 14, and so on, you begin, you, you begin to like vary the two. You begin to, pay less to you begin to pay less attention to content and a little bit more attention to vocal cues, like voice, tone, but like basically how something is being said. And when you're at the age of 20, you completely rely on how something is being said. So that explains why we, as most ALA students, we pay more attention to how something is being said than really what is being said. I'm quite sure you all remember what happened yesterday. <laughs> so, so, yes, so, yes, I said children as young as four can understand vocal cues and things like that. So, in the experiment, they also discovered that even when you're young, as young as four, year old, four years old, right, even though you pay enough to, even though you pay uh, attention to content, you can also understand vocal cues. You can also tell how somebody is feeling by listening to how they say it. Because what they did was they changed the language of what they were saying. It was Italian, they, they, used, they used Italian as the language, but none of the kids were Italian, but most of them, they were able to uh, label what emotion was being conveyed by the speaker. Yes, as one grows up, you tend to also grow towards vocal cues. So this is what my main, as I've been saying tonight, my main focus, trying to figure out how can we improve the computer industry in such a way that it can match up to what we as humans are able to sort of like uh, detect in speech, right? So this is a graph. And this graph shows where the computer is in recognizing happiness and sadness in speech and where the four-year-olds are. And as you can see, I'm quite sure all of you do math, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a huge difference here between where the computer industry is and recognizing happiness and sadness and where the four-year-olds are. 
and I'm quite sure most of you love your computers, but trust me, when it comes to labeling emotions or trying to figure out how you're feeling, this is where they lie. Okay. Okay, so all the things that I've just said, what do they basically boil down to? So this is a four-year-old kid. I don't know his name, I wish I did. <laughs> so, here, there's red, what, cabinets and thingies. This is the K computer. It's the world's fastest supercomputer in the world. Uh, it reaches a maximum, guys, listen, 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 listen. It, it, it has, it has, a, it reaches a maximum of 10 petaflops processing power per second. What that basically means is that if there were a billion people, imagine billion people, a billion people doing 150,000 calculations per second. That's how fast this computer is. Let me say that again. A billion people all at the same time doing 150 calculations per second. That's how fast that is. But who is the best at labeling emotions? The four year old, exactly. So, I'm quite sure many of you may be wondering, I gave you the reasons why I chose this specific subject or topic, but here's the main reasons why this is important to me, right? So, I'm quite sure many of you have heard of autistic kids, people, for instance, they find it difficult to recognize emotions, right? And when whether through facial expressions or whether they, or whether if somebody's speaking to them, right? So imagine if you had a microphone like this and you attached it to an earpiece, and when every time somebody was speaking to an autistic child or person, then whatever the speaker was saying would be recorded and analyzed by the, pro, the by the program, and it would tell the kid if the kid is in danger, he should run, or if, for instance somebody's actually angry at the kid or somebody is pleased with what the kid has done, for instance. So this has many useful applications in that arena. Then, secondly, you know how all of you, um, you know how you... Guys, yeah, seriously. <laughs> you know how all of you um, call customer service, service lines, for instance, and you get this automated system where you have to follow a list of instructions, punch in one, two, or three, or four. You know how annoying that is? Yeah, yeah. It's really annoying. So, what this could actually eventually do is that you could just pick up your phone, right, and call customer service, and state the problem that you have. Then the program behind whatever cell phone company it would be would, would take whatever statement, paragraph, however you expressed your problem, and try to, like, like they decipher it and try to find a solution to that problem and give it to you without actually speaking to an actual person on the other end of the line, which would really be helpful and save a lot of time. And thirdly, this is the one that I like, a phone that can detect how the, how the caller on the other side is feeling. So, you know how sometimes it's difficult to figure out how the other person on the other line is actually feeling, whether they're bored, whether they're excited, or whether they're, you know, lying, or... There are a lot of things that happen on the other side of the line, right? So... <laughs> there are a lot of things which you are unaware of. So, what this could potentially do is that when you call the person, right, the phone would analyze the other person's speech and actually tell you whether the person on the other side is lying, is either sad or happy, or they're just neutral, they don't really, you know. No, they're just uninterested, or things like that. And what this, if you actually broaden the scope of this, right, eventually, if you had a GPS system and you had Bluetooth, you could actually figure out what makes people tick, what really makes them excited, what really gets them, what really makes them sad. Are they always sad at work? Are they happier at home? Or does it depend on who they're with in a at a specific time of the day? You know, things like that. This could potentially sort of like solve this problem of figuring out how other people on the other side of the line are. And another use is, which I actually got by answering one of the questions during the poster presentation, was uh, 
in the, apparently in the US, uh, a lot of deaths are caused by depression. So if, you, if people could actually call to the customer service or whatever of that depression hotline or whatever, then the program could analyze where in this stage of this call this person is. Is this person calm? Is this person actually stressed? And it would be a way much, it would be a much easier way of handling a huge number of calls and preventing a lot of deaths. Okay, then the last one is a computer that listens to its user. You know how many of you get angry at your laptop? <laughs> angry at your iPhone, angry at anything that's technological, you just freak out and you know, it just it gets to the point where you feel like throwing it to the wall or something, right? So, if you had, if this emotional analysis, if the speech motion analysis was to be improved over time, this would, what, this would be the results. If you were angry at your laptop, and maybe you were trying to open Facebook, but on the other hand, you're opening a game, you're opening a specific web, web page, on the other hand, you are processing a lot of things. Like, if you're all doing a lot of things at the same time, but you want a specific thing to work right now, you got angry and started shouting at the laptop, the laptop would eventually get, this person is angry, he wants me to. <laughs> so, the, the laptop would potentially let, get that the user is angry, he wants me to open this right now, so I'll stop everything else and bring this to the user, that's what he immediately wants. Imagine how easy life would be. <laughs> Way much easier, right? Yeah. So, just in, in light of what has happened today, uh, I'm not gonna make you stand. No, I don't do standing. It's too much, too much, too much work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I'm gonna make you do is, since this is a blend of psychology and computing to some extent, because it deals with emotions and also deals with computers, I want you to say my name in binary. What that basically means is you just have to repeat what I have to say. <laughs> right? So one zero zero one one zero one one. One zero zero one one zero one. No, come on guys, no. One zero zero one one zero one one. One zero zero one one zero one one. Guys, those were two completely different codes. <laughs> anyway, fine. Fine. Okay, so going further, right, as you have seen. My whole uh, research and my whole focus will be trying to figure out how can we build computers which are better than four-year-olds at, lab at labeling emotions. And this is a very interesting field because you get to do a lot of math and I'm quite sure the math and the physics of it is not as complicated as theory, but I'm quite sure it's doable. Yeah, it's doable. It's doable. <laughs> so, thank you for listening. Yes, any questions? <laughs> I'll go with this one for now. <laughs> Uh, given that the American law system relies on lie detector testing, and given your statistics here about comparing computers to four-year-old, does this mean lie detector uh, the detector test is really not accurate? Uh, I would say in this case, this one is more along the lines of emotions. Not really. I'm not sure where lie falls in, you know. But this one is more along the lines of emotions. I'm not sure how accurate the whole lie lie detector thing. But this one is based on seven, on the seven basic emotions, which uh, I think I can't decide all of it, but I know it's like it's based on seven basic emotions. But lying, I don't think falls in with that area. 